It's amazing to think holiday baking season is here and I'm getting questions from house and home viewers. And one of them is, what is the best icing to use for decorating sugar cookies? The best one is called a royal icing. It's a meringue powder base with added icing sugar and you can make it as thick or thin as you want. Ah, can you substitute margarine for butter in a, a cookie recipe? Yes, you can use margarine. You won't get quite that mouthfeel you get from a butter-based cookie. And if the concern is taking dairy out of your cookie recipes, then I opt for virgin coconut oil. A question I get often is, which desserts are best for make ahead? You know what my topic is? My apple crisp trifle. My apple crisp trifle is actually buy one recipe, get one free, because it starts with making a simple apple crisp. For the base, I take six cups of apples, I peel them and dice them, and you know what? You can use any type of apple. An apple crisp is kind of the chocolate chip cookie of the fruit dessert world, because you should think, okay, I wanna make an apple crisp, and then 15 minutes later, apple crisp is in the oven. I toss that with a quarter cup of brown sugar and just a little bit of vanilla. A plate like this is nice because if you're just serving the apple crisp, you can bring it to the table and it looks nice. This is the new enamel line from Curadori and this is their deep dish pie plate. For the crisp topping, I start with a cup and a quarter of regular rolled oats and I add a bit of brown sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of cinnamon of course, and then I add a half a cup of melted butter and I stir that until it's moistened and that gets evenly spread on top of the apples. In a 350 oven, it takes 35 to 40 minutes. You're looking for an even browning and bubbling fruit around the sides. Now it's time to make a traditional pastry cream. I start by heating up half a cup of milk with a half a cup of half and half cream to make a nice, rich custard base. I've separated four eggs and I add to that two and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, a little bit of vanilla, and then I add my quarter cup of brown sugar right before you're ready to add your liquid. Otherwise, that sugar will crystallize onto the egg yolks and you'll never get a perfectly smooth pastry cream. Now I always make sure I have my finished bowl with a couple tablespoons of butter and a strainer ready because once this starts cooking, you can't walk away from it. There's no social media tweeting while this is happening. It's very important when you're adding the hot milk to the egg mixture to start by adding it slowly. That tempers the temperature of the eggs so they don't curdle by the heat of the milk. Then you transfer it back to your pot and over medium to medium high heat, whisking constantly, you'll see that you've got fine bubbles when you first start mixing it. As it starts to thicken, those bubbles dissipate and then you know your custard's almost ready. It's a good habit to always strain your sauces and fillings. And I'm straining it over two tablespoons of butter because that cool butter is gonna cool down the pastry cream so it stops cooking. Then I let it cool completely to room temperature before I put it in the fridge. It's important to take a piece of plastic wrap and put it right on the surface of the pastry cream so you don't get that pudding skin that forms on top. Maybe you accidentally overcook your custard. You don't have to throw it away and start it again. What you can do is use an immersion blender or a food processor or blender, put the hot overcooked custard in it, puree it, strain it right away, and guess what? No one will ever know. The assembly is fun, so you pull out all your ingredients, and before you get started, you wanna pick your trifle bowl. You can use a classic footed trifle bowl if you want, or grab a flower vase. What counts is a glass bowl with straight sides so you can see all the beautiful layers. Before I get to assembling the trifle, I whip a cup and a half of cream and I add two thirds of that to my thick pastry cream base. And I add a bit of bourbon to the pastry cream too. It's classic to add spirits to a trifle, but you don't have to. I'll start with a third of the crisp, top that with a third of the cream, a sprinkle of lightly toasted pecans and keep layering until I've used up all of the crisp and the pastry cream. As you're assembling, keep an eye on the sides of the trifle. Make sure you can see all of the elements. The finishing touch is that remaining whipped cream with a sprinkling of pecans and a pinch of cinnamon. And a humble little apple crisp has turned into an elegant festive dessert. What I truly love about this dessert is it's grand and elegant, perfectly festive, but it's actually quite approachable. I love the fact that it's easy to transport, so I know you are going to be the hero at your next festive dinner party.